Welcome to the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. My name is Lars Fontine and welcome to the show once each week on Monday of uh, this time. So we will talk about cycles each Monday, you know about this. Today, this is a special episode as I will take a remake on a session I did last year, but as this session is so important, um, I think it's time for today also to review the key findings of that session and it's about findings from Edward Dewey about false cycles and the synchrony of cycles. So these are the key topics um, which we'll review today based on a session I did around a year ago. So this is a remake and a remix of this session because the findings are anyhow 50 years old but so important if we do digital signal processing and if we are dealing with cycles from our cycle scanner. So the the key takeaway for today's session is about to learn something about when can I trust cycles and what might be false cycles. And this is especially related um, if you do with visual alignment of past tops and bottoms in the markets, which could lead to the observation that there are cycles, but there's always the chance that you have false cycles detected on the chart and digital signal processing helps us to derive the real cycles and how false cycles look on the chart and on the scanner. This is what you do we teach us and this is what I want to review today with you. So stay tuned for the next 15 minutes to learn about this topic and you will get a real workbook which will be linked down in the description which helps you then after the session also to play with these findings and to draw your own conclusions on that. So I will hope you will like this review and session and we will talk again next week. Thanks and enjoy the session on false cycles for today. The Mysterious Forces That Trigger Events. It's one of the last books which um, Edward Dewey uh, did 90, 70 something. Um, it's hard to get this kind of book today. So if you have a chance to, to grab a copy of this book or go out to the library and check if you can find one, um, it's really worth it. Uh, um, there's, there's lots of gold nuggets in it here. Um, and we're working hard at the foundation to make this book uh, available again. So we are working on republishing this kind of book. And why? Two things. First of all, it has great knowledge in this book, which is still valid for today. So and this is why I, I will revisit two of his findings. And second, it's fun to read. The way it was written is really easy to get and understand. It reads a little bit like a thriller going to the last century about cycle research, the, the network, the contacts of Dewey. So it's, it's, it's really fun to read and, and think about the network during these times. So okay, let's get it started. So um, the, first, the first important um, topic um, is about the, the agenda is, of this book is quite, quite large. So this is just the overview of what, what's in this book. And um, together, I, I just want to get two snippets about the first thing is about the chapter nine, the cycles of Wall Street. So um, um, yeah, so, so what's, what's the um, cycles of Wall Street and what's in this kind of content. Um, and the second topic is about the ultimate clue. So the final findings, which he then summarized um, as, as findings of 30 years of, of uh, cycle, cycle knowledge here. I'm just looking at, at the chat here on the left so that you don't get irritated. So I will try to keep an eye also on, 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 on the session here. Richard is with us also in the chat. So feel free to continue the discussion here with uh, my colleagues and, and Richard Smith here. Um, so to have also this discussion going on here. Um, yeah, so what, what, what's, what about today? So chapter nine, cycles on Wall Street. Um, one important topic I want to talk about, and it's all now original content from Dewey. What I show you here, you will see the page reference also in the, in the uh, bottom here of, of this uh, page here, so that you can uh, look this up. Everything here is original content from Edward Dewey. A false cycle, a false cycle. Um, 
this topic is important because in today's world it's sometimes much too easy yeah, to find a cycle. You click on a tool, on a button, on an indicator, on whatever application and you see a cycle. Boom, there it is. But in today's world it's even more important that you get an idea of differentiate between real valid cycles and all cycles. So Dewey uh, dedicated um, um, some topics on what is a false cycle. And let's, I will use a real example out of, out of his original book here. So what you see here is if you look at the, the, the chart here, um, um, it's, this is the data set, this is the, the time axis here, and it looks like here it's kind of clean cycle. And if you measure it, the distance from top to top, it's a 5.7 years cycle. So what? So if you look where you are today in, in this timeline here, you would say, wow, well, great. Why not use this kind of cycle for forecasting? It's repeating a lot of times. It's, it's clear, visible, has a nice amplitude, it's, it's constant, it's repeating for over, for over 30, 50 years. So what's with this cycle now using for forecasting? Using standard forecasting approach, you will now plot the kind of yeah, period or the length of this cycle in the future, which will give you the, the additional tops and lows where to expect moving forward in time, just highlighted here on the chart. So, but that's how it works out. So where's the top? Where's the next low? Where's, where's the next top? The cycle disappeared. And it's not disappearing one time, it disappeared for 20 years, gone cycle away. So what we detected this cycle was really valid showing here in, in the history. And I think this is what we all observe in our real analysis. So we, we think about, ah, this is a great cycle. This is really, really, let's use it for forecasting. But then cycle is gone. Your forecasting is not worth anything. So, and this is a real example from his data set, um, page 116. So you can, you can look it up. So what happened here? We clearly saw the cycle of 5.7 years. And that's now the risk of just, yeah, visually thinking about using this kind of data set and measuring these, these cycles. Because what's in it here, um, that the observed 5.7 year cycle was never a cycle with a life and beat of its own. So, so this is Dewey's finding, and this is, this is valid for today. So this is really important, you, you, you get the background out of it. So why was it never a cycle? Um, we clearly saw it on the chart. It was never a cycle with a life and beat of its own. Wow, no, that's interesting. So, okay, let's get into it because, and any observed cycle yeah, could be a combination of many closely related cycles. So it looks like this is one cycle, but any cycle you might find on a chart or it's highlighted on a chart or it's often used in tools where you align the low on the chart aligned with the next low on the chart and then you draw these circles on your charting platform and you say, okay, here's a clear cycle from low to low. This is what we saw here. But be careful, any of these observed cycles could be a combination of many closely related cycles. What does this mean? Um, let's, let's dig into it um, now. I've prepared something here to, to get a better understanding of this. So, so let's bring this now into today's kind of um, analysis world here. I will just uh, switch now the um, screen here. So what I've prepared here, and I will drop it this, this link also in the um, YouTube section so you can play with this uh, afterwards. So this is a playbook um, um, which, which kind of allows you play a little bit with cycles. So what you see here on the top, yeah, is exactly what, um, what I've shown you here in the analysis. So let's make it even, even bigger here for a second, um, that you can follow a little bit better here. So, okay. So let's, let's have a closer look at this here now. So what, what you see here um, is, is on the upper one is the cycle we observed on, on the chart here. So on, on the timeline, 
Um, and, and the two points here are just measured from top to top. And you see here, this is a measure. It's, it's, it's broken down into mathematical terms now here. So it's a 5.7 year cycle here. It's measuring between these two points here. But and, and below this uh, observed cycle, which then has gone away, um, these are the closely related three cycles, which as combination make up the cycle you have observed. So the real cycles, which are in these data sets, are the three cycles here, uh, which can be seen here uh, are below on the screen. So the first cycle, which is in this data set, has a length of 4.89 years. The second cycle has a length of 5.5 years. And the third cycle has a length of 6.07 cycles. So there is no cycle of 5.7 years there is no cycle so and and now what's important it's always the superposition of different cycles there's there's always a combination of many cycles which is active in in any market or whatever market you are you are analyzing so um you need to analyze doesn't matter which data set you're working on what different cycles are active there and even if from a visual perspective it might look so easy it's it's important that you get the background so the 5.7 cycle is just the combination of these three cycles the combination of the 4.8 the 5.5 and the 6.1 i mean the playbook now allows a little bit to play with it so we can we can disable cycles here so and make them the composite so i've now disabled the first two cycles and now you see it's just just made of these um two cycles here so the black line is just now one cycle here and if you activate the 4.8 cycle uh, you see that the composite of this cycle changes and if you activate also the third cycle you see now that ah this is a 5.7 year cycle but the combination and this is a superposition of cycles in this time period here phases out so this this 5.7 cycle which is no real cycle is not there and this is what you often see in cycles so that oh the cycle has gone the cycle has disappeared no the cycle has not disappeared you just have not found the real cycles which are based on the observed cycle you, you are using so um, um and that's also the discussion about cycle inversions and the cycle disappeared and all this kind of stuff and Dewey pointed out that, that be careful, cycles can fade away from the observational perspective, but you need to know what are the cycles behind this kind of superposition. And I mean, in the years this was written, this was written 1970 something, there was no digital signal processing. So I mean, in today's world, we really can be happy. We have digital signal processing tools, which help us just with a click yeah, to understand uh, what are the cycles here? So today it's really easy for every one of us, use whatever your tool you like uh, to detect what are the cycles in the tier. So we just need to pull up um, a digital signal processing engine, which will show us then, ah, there's a cycle of 5.8, 5.4.8, 5.5, Do you want a combination of that? I mean, you know, you need then other tools to validate if these three cycles should be used. So they we provide Bartle score and what, what there's there's then other tools which allow you that but if you have these tools and then then you can plot whatever you wherever you are in time then you can use this superposition for forecasting so takeaway number one for this session and therefore i wanted to to highlight this topic here whenever you see or observe a cycle or think about okay i have now um found a cycle yeah Check for yourself, have you validated if this might be a false cycle? What tools do you use to validate if you have a false cycle, if you're dealing with a false cycle? Because we are all, and this includes me also, are uh, uh, falling into love with a kind of observed cycle and then doing some projections. Before you do that, check yourself, use additional tools. The observed cycle could be a combination of many, many um, closely related cycles. So please, and, and therefore, the, the finding Dewey outlined here is so true for today's cycle analysis, so that, that please 
whatever tool you use, once you've found a cycle, get back, check for yourself, could this cycle be a combination of many other cycles? So this is a false cycle you are using because it's, it's a high risk if you use false cycles for forecasting because any forecast, any projection will fail if you use a false cycle. So this was takeaway one. And the question you should ask yourself now afterwards is, what are you using to check if you are working on false cycles? So I think one thing is use digital signal processing to break down any data set, any, any composite cycle into the clearly uh, cycles which are in this data set. And then you can check for yourself what the composite is. There, there might be other tools, but this finding from Dewey is so valid until today. But okay, I think I've, I've repeated this now several times. Okay, I will give you the um, link for this tool here because I think it's, it's um, also quite, quite good to understand. I just need to check now what's with my camera going on. Oh, yeah, here, I'm back again. So um, what, what, what's important here in this kind of um, setup here is that you um, have answers on, on this question here. So, okay, let's now uh, move on. I'm quite, quite lost in my set up here, but give me a second. Yeah, that's where we are. Sorry. Takeaway number one. Um, be sure you're, you're, you're on that. So this is, this is his, uh, uh, what he outlined in his book. So I just want to bring this into the kind of digital tools so you can play with the, uh, with the playbook uh, on your own and, and learn about it because make yourself comfortable that you, that you understand this. Um, okay. So topic number two, um, the most significant evidence as Dewey phrased this finding now, and it's found page 190 I that now it's, it's, it's one of the last chapters, uh, he was, he was uh, using and therefore I think this is, this is so important also to, to be aware of that. So the most significant evidence after over 30 years of work on cycles Dewey did. And read this carefully now together with me. Whenever we discover cycles that have the same length in completely unrelated phenomena, we are put on alert. So this is one part of the story. If you find cycles with the same length in different data sets, you should be on alert. Yeah, that's one finding. And then the second part of the story. The significant that the cycle is really present in different data uh, gets higher and higher if you find the same cycle in, in, in also other phenomena. So, so not only in the same data sets, so you use other data sets. And then the ultimate clue yeah, that he was then thinking about is we discover that all cycles of the same length tend to turn at the same time. They act in synchrony. Now think about, it's difficult to find cycles with, with identical length anyhow. So, I mean, if you find the same cycle with the same length in different data sets, wow, that, that's even not so, so simple and so easy. But think about how, how much more difficult yeah, it is to find cycles with identify, identical, identical length that also turn at the same time. So these are two topics. Not only you found the same, t the same length of these cycles in different data sets, they are now also turning at, this, at the same point in time. So, so this is really, really very, very hard to identify. So, and this is what he called cycles act in synchrony. So, so the, the significance that you have a cycle is at, at least high if, if the length is valid in different data set, point one. Point two, if these are now from the phase perspective aligned and they turn at the same time, wow, that's kind of cycle parade, cycle synchrony. So these are the times when you observe this kind of behavior, you're not only on alert, you know now that cycle turn is around the corner. And I mean, these findings work up to today. Yeah? This was written 50 years ago. 50 years ago, it's valid in your today cycle analysis. 
And it's so important. Thank you.